Welcome to Last Match Standing, the podcast where we review, relive, and rank the 100 greatest wrestling matches of all time. As always, I'm Spencer. I'm one of the Jumping Bomb Angels. And I am the table. <laughs> Which means you are unbreakable. You know it. Very well done. I think that's our new streak. <laughs> Tables that don't break. Well, I mean, it's two in a row. That's two in a row. New streak started. We got another couple streaks to talk about, but we're going to get there in a minute. That's right. Today, we are coming to you from September the 2nd, 1995, from Nippon Budokan in Tokyo, Japan, from AJW Destiny. And we have Minami Toyota versus Akira Hokuto. Well, guess who's back on the podcast? This is Akira Hokuto's second appearance on the pod, but... The first appearance for someone who many consider to be the single greatest professional wrestler of all time, Manami Toyota. Just, <laughs> just, just uh, a couple of things. First of all, uh, I'm glad that we all survived last week's episode and we're all still friends. <laughs> so that's good. Oh, God, I had a very awkward drive. <laughs> it's it's okay. I, so you guys left. I picked everything up and I ate like a pound of that new uh, brownie swirl uh, bluebell ice cream. Fudge decadence. Yeah, that fudge brownie decadence. Um, and and you know I was okay the next day. So. That that always does help, and I and I appreciate that. Um, I do want to say that on Twitter we got a great message about the Lynch flare match, which, <laughs> uh, and, and actually it does not say Landon hated it. That's not the message, despite <laughs> what you might think. Uh, at Kick Clouds, our buddy said, did you guys notice Mike Kyoto kicked the chair towards Lynch when she was in the figure four in the ladder since she couldn't reach it and hold on to Becky's top during the powerbomb spot to make sure she wouldn't fall with flair? What a pro. Ooh, yeah. There's a reason Kyoto gets chance in the middle of matches. Yeah, I mean, Landon, you mentioned how he picked up the SmackDown Women's Championship belt to save it. Right? Well, I, well, MVP. Well, I got to say, I mean, I told you guys, Mike Kyoto was all in for that match. Oh, oh. I got you. He said it. I said it twice <laughs> when we recorded, and you guys didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, really? Man. You guys got it this time. Get that reference. Got it this time. Um, all right. So uh, let's let's jump in on Toyota, Landon. I know you're pumped to talk about it. So I am. So let us know about Manami Toyota. For those of you unfamiliar with Manami Toyota, she debuted in 1987 at the age of 16. Whoa. Which is somewhat common for the the Japanese for, female wrestlers. Yeah, for Joshi, it's very common. It's very common. Uh, but she made a habit early on of stealing the show along with partner Mima Shimoda, uh, known together as the Tokyo Sweethearts. Toyota rode this momentum all the way to her first AJW championship victory over Mika Takahashi before finding more success with rival tag team partners, so that's rival slash tag team partner, uh, <laughs> Toshio Yamada. Their clash of styles made for an exciting tag team, but better opponents. They ended up having a hair versus hair match in 92. And although Toyota won the match, she was a class act. She did not want Yamada to get her head shaved. And they actually had like, so you know if you're watching in, in Japan, a lot of times the organizations will have the, you know, in New Japan calls them young lions. It's the, mm -hmm. the younger trainees around the ring. Yes. It took four trainees to hold down Toyota <laughs> as Yamada. Because so, Yamada said, look, I want to respect the conditions of our match. You won. I'm going to shave my head. And they were just, they're so close, right? Yes, they're rivals, but there's so much uh, mutual respect between them. And it, that was just a really great moment in Toyota's career. When you mention that, the only thing that pops in my head is in like TNA 2008, whenever they did the stipulation where, oh, whatever box you grab determines what you have to do. And, oh, I forgot and about that. Feast or Fired. Yeah, Feast or Fired. And then, and then uh, Roxy Level had to have her head shaved while she was in complete tears, <laughs> while like all the other knockouts were like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And she's like legitimately in tears. They did not tell us it was going to happen. Oh, my God. And they made her shave her head. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, she didn't know that it was in the Feast. I love Roxy, though. I really miss... I don't know where yeah. she is right now. I mean, I think it may have been, like, bias on my part, slightly, because she was billed from Lafayette. Mm. But... Well, she's the voodoo queen. I know. Ro Roxy Laveau. Lady Re what, is that even her real name, though? I think Laveau? Madame Laveau. Madame yeah. Laveau is the real right. thing? Yeah. yeah, she's from Lafayette, and the character Gambit, Remy Laveau, was supposed to be oh. her aunt's descendant. Yeah, I've watched American yeah. Horror Story. So, sidebar, I'm actually... <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Remy LeBeau, Gambit from the X-Men. Yeah, no, I'm actually reading uh, X-Men, like Uncanny. I, I started That's why he's from, from Lafayette. And Gambit just came up for the first time, and it was yeah. so cool. They went to New Orleans. I don't know. I just, I, I freaked out. I love Gambit. <laughs> it's like, oh my uh, God, I'm from there. Okay, so now we're talking about comics on Last Match Standing. Yeah. Here we go. Last Comic Standing, coming your way. 
Uh, so soon after the hair versus hair match, uh, the two would team once again and win their first WWWA World Tag Team Championship in March of 1992. And for those unfamiliar, the WWWA Championships, the tag, the heavyweight, this is the, the cream of the crop for uh, the All Japan uh, Women's uh, Pro Wrestling Organization. Those were the biggest titles you could win. And they defeated, for those belts, the team of Jungle Jack, who is Aja Kong and Bison Kimura. Oh, damn. Uh, Toyota would go on to hold various singles championships throughout her career, including a three-year run with the IWA Championship, a championship created by Calgary Stampede Wrestling and defended in all Japan women's pro wrestling. Yeah, beat that Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Toyota would reach the top of the Japanese women's wrestling ladder, in March of 1995, by dethroning Aja Kong as the WWWA heavyweight champion at AJW Queendom 3. You have to understand, this was absolutely huge. At this point, Aja Kong is at the height of her rule as an unstoppable monster holding the WWWA title for two years before losing it to Toyota. Kong is able to take back the championship in June, but she's taken down by the new monster in town, Dynamite Kansai, who at that point was most closely associated with a rival promotion, JWP. So there's a lot of shifting going on in power. This is a really interesting time in wrestling. So Toyota then found herself on the path back to the top. Because obviously, once you taste that gold, she only had it for a few months. Yeah. Every fiber of your being wants to get back on top. But to get there, she has to go through none other than Akira Hokuto, her former partner, by the way. They did tag together previously. So before we get into the match, a few points on Akira. Before becoming a professional wrestler, and, and we did touch on Akira's career, so I, I won't go at length about everything here. You can definitely go back and listen to our Akira versus Kondori match, which is un- episode 34. And I believe it's, it's still ranked like number 11. It's high up there, on our yeah. list. It's insane. Um, Akira Hokuto organized an official Bull Nakano fan club <laughs> when she was still watching wrestling. Oh, man, uh, I want to join that club. And she was so inspired by Bull that she dropped out of high school to pursue a career in professional wrestling. That's tremendous. I mean, I wish I had her courage. No kidding. I mean, that, that really says a lot. Unbelievable. I mean, we talked last time about how she was known as the mummy, mm-hmm. right? Because she's almost always wrapping one injury or another. One of her most high-profile injuries, though came from a 1990 match against none other than Manami Toyota when she absolutely destroyed her knee during that match. So here we are, five years later, Toyota and Hokuto go at it once again, and this time the implications are insane. Hokuto is sort of getting on the end of her career. Mm -hmm. At least a lot of people consider this match even to be her swan song, right? even though she did wrestle several matches after this. Well, yeah, she went to WCW. But Toyota is fastly becoming, you know, a a lot of people see her as the greatest wrestler of all time, even at this point in 1995. So, But she knows she has to beat another one of the greatest to get back to the top. And here we are. September the 2nd, 1995. AJW Destiny, we were in the main event. Oh, yeah. AJW Destiny Climax, right? That's oh, the yeah. title of this match. And, and, Destiny, that is. No, I was, I was waiting. When's that going to come out? <laughs> and uh, I mean, rightfully so. This is the main event. I mean, we have the return of Akira Hokuto. She faces her greatest challenge of her entire career. Manoma Toyota, former friend, rival, ally, tag partner. Who will be victorious? Will Hokuto rise to the occasion? Will Naomi Toyota topple the beast? Find out in the next episode of Dragon Ball. Oh, fuck, wrong, wrong. <laughs> but seriously, this was. Huge, it, it Sorry, was. I'm on the and, wrong podcast. <laughs> I got a little and, excited there. And and the truth is, it, it's a big stage. Um, the lights, the the crowd. It's just it's set up to be a big deal, and it is a big deal, and it is a big deal. <laughs> and we love when matches deliver on the hype. You know, one little detail of this match that I absolutely adored. Are you gentlemen familiar with the black hat white hat analogy? Please, enlighten us. Black hat, white hat. You know exactly who your good guy and your bad guy is. Okay, so I hear, I'll hear, I hear anything hat, I think big hat Logan. 
So I, I need I need oh, you to. Oh, no, we're recording the Dark Souls podcast tomorrow. Though. Tomorrow. Oh, yeah. God damn it. No, we're no, both no. on the wrong podcast. Yeah, know, right? And we're going to have the X-Men podcast after that. Uh, so, no, the uh, concept of black hat, white hat is you know who your good guy and your bad guy is because a good guy wears white, bad guy wears black. It's very, very common analogy. Well, Akira Hakuto literally walked out to the ring wearing a black hat. Well, they li- yes, and then you know, Toyota comes out in a white robe. I wonder who the villains are. But, but... What's very, very interesting about that is, I mean, I, I could go on at length about but Hokuto's the, uh, wedding dress because it's amazing, that black wedding dress she's wearing, right? But once they take off their entrance gear... They're wearing opposite colors. They're wearing opposite colors. So Toyota's good. wearing all black and uh, Hokuto is wearing like red and white. So, so what, like, what are we meant to take away from that? Because that was just so striking. Obviously, they're trying to say something. Blurred lines. You, like, oh, you, might, you might think Hokuto's the evil villain, but maybe it's... I know, we, Toyota, you don't know. Watch the match and find out. And and maybe to me, when when I saw it, I thought, you know, these two wrestlers are trying to, they're they're having a match, and this is going to help us decide who's the greatest of all time, right? So when they have their entrances, you have your uh, your sort of idea about who they are, and then they take off their entrance attire, and then maybe you don't know. Yeah. So you know, kind of back to your blurred lines, like who is best you know i think we have to have this match to find out yeah i, I do really well, well first off i was this right now we get we, first off we get that amazing interest music by hokuto it's so fucking awesome black wedding dress and then she kind of enters the ring and then she's out of the ring toyota comes out and while she's going yay here i am i'm like what's going on because all of a sudden the music stops the lights come up and there's like a big commotion and then before you know it, she's only outside of the ring. Yeah, what happens here at the beginning? To she me- gets shit canned immediately. Hokuto just shit cans her and does a fucking flip sent on off the top rope. Still in the wedding dress. Yeah, that's how it starts. <laughs> no, the bell has not rung Yeah, yet. I know. Uh, well, I do want to say that something I noticed during the entrance that I think rings true, and I think it's just awesome that, that it's on the mat. Uh, if you look on the mat, it says, All Japan Women's Pro, women's pro Wrestling, right? But then it also says... Victory through guts, yeah, right on the on the ring mat. And I'd say it definitely takes guts to do that, and then disrobe, stand in the middle of the ring, and extend your hand as yeah. a show of respect. Oh, if if there's nothing else that you can take away from this match, or honestly from this promotion, it's that everyone who steps between these ropes has more guts and more courage than any other pro wrestling you're gonna see. It's yeah. insane what these people can do. But yeah. I, I just got to say, the fact that Hokuto blindsides her, flips Senton, and then stands in the ring with her hand out like, may the best woman win. I'm like, you bitch. It's so good. <laughs> and I love that because she's like, clearly she's baiting her in. And I'm like, oh, well, Toyota's not going to fall for this. And then she eats a fucking back suplex immediately. I'm like... You fucking idiot. You knew she was going to do that. <laughs> well, Akira, that's the thing about Akira. Like, she has so many small details to her. It's not just the way that she presents herself and this extension of the arm. Look at her. Her lipstick is, is black. Mm-hmm. In, in mega contrast to her white and orange attire, yeah. her lipstick is black, and she's got one of the only wrestlers that I know that has these long fingernails. Yeah, she yeah. Does. They were very long, and they were painted black. It's 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 almost like she's playing again both sides because well, what, she's got the bright gear and then the black nails and it you just know, adds to that menacing look. You know what it just hit me with as well. You know we talked about how this is sort of almost her swan song, right? Like the second half of her career. So and I don't know. This is just you know a, 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 an observation from the outside. But imagine her wearing that white gear as her career, but then the black lipstick, the black nails is sort of like the end of her career seeping in, the death of her career, right? It could be. I know she did wear, I think if you go back and watch the 1993 match that we covered, she was still wearing the black nails and the black lipstick. Mm -hmm. Um, But I definitely got that from the black wedding dress. Yeah. Coming out in the black wedding dress, sort of, it it really struck me that she knows Mm-hmm. That this could be yeah. the end of her career, well, or at least the beginning of the If you want to allude to that match, you got to remember she also wore like the fucking Oni death mask with Correct. Like, the giant, crazy blonde hair. And this yeah, one, but that was just being the dangerous queen. That was true. That this, was this, is, this is a very Hokuto. different Hokuto. This is a very different Hokuto. And not to be outdone by being blindsided and suplexed, uh, very first thing that Toyota does is she throws her out of the ring and does a top up missile drop kick to the outside. 
Uh, 30 seconds in, by the way. <laughs> so it's like, all right, here we go. You know, I, I think we, we often talk about, uh, you know, how hard hitting some of the matches on our list are. We, you, we love a really good drop kick, but I don't think we find a harder drop kick than oh. in our two AJW matches. Oh, good lord. They're just the stiffest. And They're they trying to kill incredible. each other. Well, Toyota's known for her missile drop kicks. Yeah. And well, she, she gets some in in here. Yeah. Uh, but what I do really enjoy is, as they're going back into the ring, as if to say... You're going to miss this lockup. As Toyota goes for the lockup, Hokuto just hits a Northern Light suplex. Quick, and I'm like, quick as a whistle. And I'm like, whoa, like, what the fuck? This match is like every time I think I know what they're going to do, they just flip like everything you think you know about women's wrestling. Like, no, fuck you. Uh, yeah, we'll go for like a knuckle lock. No, fuck you. How about everything Northern I Lights. think I know about wrestling? Everything I thought I knew about a camel clutch. Let me tell you something. That, <laughs> that, that whole series, camel clutch. That whole series. That series starts with a sharpshooter, uh, scorpion lock. Well, scorpion lock, but then, wrench pan, scorpion lock. Sorry. I'll no, I, I liked where you're going. I'll see. Well, it's just it's a it's a it's a series of moves, right? Hokuto starts with the scorpion lock, and then she tra- It almost transfers itself into an STF, right? So she's got the chin, and then she switches into the camel clutch. And what does she do with that oh camel clutch? Oh my god! This is the. Deepest camel clutch I've ever seen. It starts off deep. This and is like then Daniel Bryan it's, levels of it's deep. Almost as if she she wants to find a way to get all the because so the way you perform a camel clutch right is you're arching the back while you're sitting on it and so, you have their chin and you have their chin. Well, she <laughs> leans all the way back so that her back is on the canvas, and to accomplish this, she, she grabs the hair. the hair of Toyota, and it's the deepest. It, camel clutch I've it, ever it seen. It looks painful. Yeah, it's it's gross almost, right? It, like yeah, the, the way is. Toyota's body is just totally deformed almost though, and bending back. Yeah, and then she puts her in a dragon sleeper. And I'm like, <laughs> right. and she's still bent all the way back. <laughs> and I'm like, like you're going to break her neck. It's, Stop it. It's, it's, she leans as far back as humanly possible. And there were points where I was convinced that Hakuto was not human. Yeah. Yeah, it's the it's this series of four submissions all in about two minutes that I was convinced. I mean, we're two minutes, three minutes into the match. Yeah, and it's over. Like it's got to be over now. No, it's not. And we're just getting started. And there's some really cool sequences. Well, I think my favorite. I know we don't do favorite moments to the end, but I'm going to say it right now. There's a moment where Toyota gets thrown to the ropes. She jumps on the top rope, pauses, and then does a backwards diving crossbody. To yes. Go. It was insane because she literally hops, hops up from the middle of the ring to yeah. the top, top rope. rope. No hands, just jumps up there, pauses, and then just does like the springboard crossbody. And I'm like, what? That was a holy shit moment for me. I've seen luchadors that can't pull that off. Well, that's what I'm saying. And these are things that if you put that in a 2020 ring, you're still blown away. So the fact that it's 1995. She paused for like a good two seconds and then just does it. I'm like, Amazing. And she follows it up with another shotgun missile drop kick. Two of them, actually. Beautiful. And, and it's not just high-flying moves for, for Toyota either, which I think is really interesting. Because now that she's starting to, to kind of gain some sort of control for the first time in the match, she hits this awesome double underhook, like butterfly oh, overhead yes, suplex. Beautiful. Oh, my God. Yeah, it just was is it, pretty to watch. Is it weird that when she started, doing like, oh, my God, she's going to do a Tiger driver. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, wait a minute, 98, it's 95. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's a very be- that suplex would have made William Regal just go, oh, that's a suplex. <laughs> What about the hair twist, right? Oh. So Toyota kind of takes it a different route, and she just grabs Akira's hair and starts twisting and twisting and twisting and twisting. I've never seen someone No, do that. so it's like the arm wrench, right? Like, yeah. that's almost what it's like, but the with hair her wrench. hair. Isn't that awful? <laughs> it's awful. It's, uh, it hurts to watch. Um, yeah, Akira ducks a clothesline, and she knows she's sort of getting desperate, so she comes back with a jump scare snap German suit. <laughs> yeah. Followed by a reverse impaler DDT. Oh, yeah. I didn't know what to call it. I was like, is that a fucking brain? Like it a was reverse essentially brain like buster? a, a dragon this? suplex brain buster. It's yeah, and, and Toyota gets dropped right on her face. It is. It's bleh. And then we go, and then immediately right back into the sharpshooter. And I'm like, fuck's sake, here we go. And then Toyota is just screaming. Yeah, no, me. Toyota screaming from that sharpshooter leg lock thing sent chills down my spine. <laughs> And then she just she just keeps wrenching it in, and we do get that rope break. And then second favorite moment, Toyota goes for a roll up, 
and they just keep rolling to reverse the roll up. <laughs> They're on the ring like three times. I'm like, fuck yes, I love this match. You know what I appreciate about uh, Akira in this moment? Uh, just before the roll up, as as the end of the the scorpion lock or sharpshooter or whatever is happening, um, Toyota does find the ropes. But instead of just breaking the hold, she actually pulls Toyota's arm off of the rope and adds it into the submission. Love that. And it's just subtle. You just don't see it often. But it's smart. It mm-hmm. makes sense. You know, make, make her not able to re-reach those ropes. Now, I think that works really well if the ref doesn't see it. Agreed. But the rule is if they touch it even once and then, then let then go, you're supposed to break the, hold. Supposed yeah. to break the yeah. hold. But it's an excellent heel move. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, absolutely. There's a moment around this point in the match where Akira comes off the ropes and she just slides down. It's it's something that in, instead of taking a clothesline, instead of ducking, she just slides down to the mat. But Toyota is onto it and just stomps her. Yeah, I love that. Stomps like right in the fu- back of the head, too. So good. Bam. It's like, but it's, it's innovative offense or defense, technically, from Akira, but Toyota's one step ahead. Yeah, but what happens after, the, after this, Landon? What happens? Akira attempts to pick up Toyota for the powerbomb, uh, but she gets flipped over. But she does quickly make good on her powerbomb attempt, <laughs> and holy shit, was it stiff. No, I love this. Like She, she goes to the powerbomb, it gets reversed, and then she reverses. She counters the counter into a fucking powerbomb! And it was a stiff powerbomb. <laughs> this was a great sequence. Great, great sequence. Uh, if you shit. didn't know, that means the streak continues, gentlemen. So after this has gone through, we get a fucking tiger suplex. When's the last time we saw a tiger suplex? Been a minute. Daniel Bryan Triple H is the last time I can remember seeing a tiger suplex on the show. That's been a minute. You're right. Very, very scary. It's like, oh, God. And then Toyota goes for an electric chair drop. And I'm like, oh, no. But that gets reversed into a second power bomb. Yeah! <laughs> there are power bombs all over the place. Uh, but there's actually... A poison Rana from Hokuto. Oh my God! Yeah. Yes, that's so scary. In '95. I know. Yes, I know. Oh my God! So, and then something that I was like blew my fucking mind. A fisherman brain buster. Is that what we're calling it? That's what. That's she what. That's dropped exactly her, what I saw. Hokuto but, dropped her on her head. That's a. That's a brain buster. Well, is that what you would call it, Landon? What did it look like to you? Yeah. Well, so fisherman buster, I guess, is what yeah, I would yeah. like. She yeah. grabs that leg, picks her up, and then drops her in the back of the neck. That's a brain buster. It looked like she killed her. Is what it looked. Yeah, like. Yeah, and then she goes for a fucking Fujiwara armbar. Did you see how Toyota kicked out of the pinfall attempt after the the fisherman? She bridges buster? out. She bridges she out. Bridges like, out. Oh my! Oh my god! Like fuck sake, man! This is intense. And then, uh, and as I mentioned, Hokuto goes for the Fujiwara armbar, and I'm like, whoa! Like, and the crowd is losing it. They're yeah, going insane. Obviously. Yeah, like, I mean, this, a little bit prior to this, and we may have we may have touched this when you said double underhook, uh, but it, this was so unique to me. So Toyota hits what. I don't even know what I would call it, right? She catches Akira's hands behind her back and just sort of, like, attaches them behind her back, almost reminiscent of a double uh, chicken wing, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, she does that. I didn't know what to call it. And drops her square on her head. Yeah. It scared me a little bit. Gosh, guys, this match is, like... And when she she goes for the pin right after the double chicken wing suplex (laughs) thing, uh, and so she bridges. She Not only does she bridge for the pin... She slides her arms down to hook both of the legs while she's bridging. Yeah. I've never seen anyone do that. Me neither. Um, So after we get what we're going to call the Fisherman Brain Buster, the Fisherman Buster, so Toyota gets her bearings. We get another, she goes for the drop kick, but mm -mm, nope, misses. And then she goes for that second attempt of the electric chair drop, but that's her version to another pin attempt. So, Paul, I need to correct you here because it's very important to note that Toyota's big finish is the Northern Lights bomb. So it's not an electric chair drop. It's the Northern Lights bomb. But she does get caught. And at one point she gets caught and she gets power bombed, which is the one you mentioned earlier. Um, but you notice Toyota trying to set up this Northern Lights bomb several times in the match. Well, I mean, it looked like she's going for electric chair drop. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it looks very... It's, the setup is the same. And yeah. when she hits it, it's like, oh, it's electric chair drop. <laughs> uh, but she goes for it a second time, and again, it's just reversed. Uh, but, and then she goes for the moonsault, but Hokuto gets the knees up. And I'm like, okay. Well, then she does hit it, and it goes for the bridge pin. And then Hokuto kicks out at, like... That was three, but no, it's really 2.988 repeating. But still, like, fuck's sake. And then the table comes out. 
And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, well, the, the thing about uh, her being able to hit uh, the Northern Lights bomb, right? When uh, the, the time that she actually hit it, Akira runs for her. And Toyota, you'll notice, grabs her wrist. How often do we mention the importance of wrist control? Mm -hmm. She throws a kick to stun Akira, runs the ropes for a Lucha-style arm drag, which was just beautiful. Oh, absolutely. And now Akira is finally dazed enough for Toyota to lock in the wrist from behind, tuck her head underneath Akira, lift backward Northern Lights bomb. But it's not enough. No. And this is when the match changes because both of these wrestlers realize their best shot isn't getting it done. Yeah. Toyota's mortified. Yeah. Like they they literally spend a hard three seconds just on her face like, after she how? after Akira kicks out. How did you kick out? Yeah, and then we go to the outside. She grabs one of the tables from well, yeah, what else are you gonna do? The young lions. And she goes for a fucking like frog splash, but that table does not break. Nope. It's, I'm convinced oh. these tables are the hardest tables. In the world. I'm convinced that this was not a planned spot. Yeah. Because <laughs> they literally, she went over the rail to the announce area grabbed it, yeah, and grabbed, just grabbed, grabbed the, table. the table in the middle. That would, They were all lined up perfectly in a row. You could barely tell that they were separate tables. She just takes the one in the middle. You know what I appreciate the most about this, I think, though, is the efficiency. Because after the splash hits and they don't go through the table... The, the table is replaced. Yeah, the ring crew put it back. <laughs> they put it right they back. Put it back. <laughs> I just like, man, and, you'd love uh, to see it's it. It's easy to miss that because after that, while the table's being put back, we get another running, paused springboard flip senton to the outside by Toyota. But she misses and hits the mat. Yeah. And the thud of that mat. It hurts. Uh, and I'm like, oh, dear God. Sharp breath. That's, that's what I took watching. And it. then Akira, taking advantage of this, she says, you want to fuck with the table? Okay, we'll fuck with the table. So she goes back to the announcer's area where the table was set back up, and she says, how about a fucking powerbomb? <laughs> a scary powerbomb. Yeah, right, the, on the, right on the back pick, of your you're head. Not, yeah, you're not even all the way up. Fuck you, you're dropping. Bam. And I'm like, oh, dear God, the table still won't fucking break. It doesn't break. So she throws the table over to be uh, by the ring, and she's like, okay, well, maybe it's not breaking because it's on the concrete. Let's 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 put it <laughs> yeah, closer let's, to the ring. Let's go back in the ring. <laughs> and so she hits a second. Another fucking power bomb. That's four. Four power bombs. New record. This streak will never fucking die. Just like the table will never die. That's right. Uh, and so she's like, okay, let me try something else. She lands a senton from the top rope and still Man. no no break. And then at this point, the ref physically picks up both competitors and puts them in the ring. <laughs> right. Like, OK, the table spot's not working out, girls. Let's get in okay. the ring. And then out of nowhere, Manoi Toyota hits a fucking Emerald Fusion. And like, oh, that was my reaction. That was me gasping when she hits it. <laughs> It's it's gorgeous and it's two. She hits two of them. I know back, back to back. To back. Hits the first one. No, uh, we're not done yet. Going to school, bitch. Another one just bam drops it and like I feel like when the first one hit, they go ah damn a frozen. And I'm like oh yes, uh, just it again. I'm like oh it's like a, yeah, it's that, like you know that's it. Yeah, and but then she fucking wins. She does win the match off of the two emerald fusions. This is my only critique of this match. If I had to say something, is that the ending was a bit rushed, right? Well, because you you saw everything that Akira yeah, like she, did she to pins Toyota. her and then they win, and she wins, and then there's like that moment of she won. Oh, right. yeah, she won! Yeah, winner. And so I, I, the only thing I understand if they're gassed. Yeah, they um, were probably extremely gassed. And and regardless, I think this is an excellent match that I think could have done really well with another 10, 15 minutes. Well, I mean, at, it's it's twenty minutes as it is, mm -hmm. right? Um, so there's still plenty, but I I do think that that's an interesting point is that it does feel like it's almost incomplete. Like there's just had they gotten back in the ring, it felt like maybe five, even just five more minutes. Well, back in the ring might have made. A big I feel difference. like Agreed. that closing sequence, which involved multiple uses of the table that did not break, mm -hmm. running senton splices to the outside, power bombs on tables, power bombs on the outside, double emerald fusion, like. You can't do all that and then keep going. Like, you're done after that. Yeah, that's a really fair point. Because they're spent. And it kind of brings me back. It, it reminds me a little bit of um, our, our PWG match. Because at that in that match, it was just like, what else? And this was some, one of the things I had sort of an issue with is, at what point 
have you done enough? Because yeah. you just like at, at some point you're just doing moves to each other, right? Pretty so, much. So kind of similar to that one. You can't do two emerald fusions, and, and then, then what else going. are you gonna do? This is in 2018. That. You're not gonna do seven f fives, right? By the way, I, that's how many he did. I counted. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're not gonna do seven f fives, and then like, and then that's what it takes to win. And I feel like this is back in an era where like you hit your finish, you win a match. Sure. Yeah. So for the, for the fact that they each, I appreciate that. By the one way, piece. most protected move in the business yeah. is the uh, one winged angel. Thank God. Yeah. But I was gonna say like this is at an era where like. Whenever she hit the Northern Lines, well, that's it. Oh, no, she kicked out. Hokuto hits the powerbomb. Kick out. Like, oh, no. Like, what do we do now? And then it's like, and then we see multiples of finishes in that. And that, it, that doesn't work. So this is like untouched, fertile, like, soil in 95. So you really have to take that with a grain of salt. Like, this was a big fucking deal when it happened. You didn't kick out of people's finishes like that. Not in 95, especially in Japan. So what were our uh, favorite moments here? Well, I, I named them both already. <laughs> I, I mean, take your pick. Uh, the like I said before, like that paused, like springboards crossbody, the paused running springboard senton splash to the outside. Oh uh, my god, the fucking like tiger, the fucking tiger suplex. Paul, you gotta pick one. Every, you just every week you gotta pick one favorite. favorite you say what's your favorite moment? <laughs> okay, what's your favorite moment? <laughs> Oh, the pause, the pa- like whenever she gets thrown to the ropes, jumps up top, up no hands, uh, pauses, and then does so the good. crossbody. That was beautiful. So good. I'm going uh, Fisherman Brain Buster. Um, that was awesome. Specifically because I had to pick between one of the textbook suplexes that we get throughout this match. And yeah. That's the one I, I decide on. Yeah, I could say any of those suplexes, and that yeah. would be my favorite moment. Yeah. I but feel like the only suplex they didn't do was a standard suplex. <laughs> yeah, right. that's true. <laughs> right. um, we get German suplexes. We get a fucking spring, like a like a snap dragon. Yeah. I don't know what to call in, it that. But. Instead of going suplex, I'm going to go what stands out the most to me is Akira's stranglehold. That turns into a camel clutch, which then turns into the hair pull. And then a dragon The sleeper. stranglehold is actually borrowed from her husband, Kinsuke Sasaki. You know, interesting thing about that? In a year's time, they're both competing at Starcade. Oh, amazing. Yeah. That's a really interesting Like, she thing wrestles that. Medusa for the women's championship. Yeah, very and true. And then, uh, uh, I forget what title Sasaki goes for. I know in 95, they did a NWA versus New Japan, so he was there. I think he wrestled Sting in 95. But in 96, he's there because he's on, he's on the roster for WCW for like a year. Yeah, I need to go back and watch all of that. Yeah, that sounds they really only, awesome. They didn't use him that much, but like, well, they didn't use her that much either. Well, f- f- for that sake, they didn't use anybody outside the fucking NWO. For oh, no, she, she wins the, the first ever WCW Women's Championship. <laughs> That's and right. And then the championship is dissolved. Yeah, Hooray! And then she never defends it. And then she just says, all right, fine, I'm going to retire then. Still reigning WCW Women's Champion. <laughs> never lost it. Well, it's like Medusa was under contract for six years. She had like seven matches. That's it. Seven. Like, Clearly undervalued. Uh, anyway. Oh, they got her so, just so that Vince couldn't have her. How the hell do we rank this one, boys? Okay, so typically when we do matches, there is that immediate kind of like, oh, my God, greatest match of all time. Uh, here's the thing, though. Uh, after getting over that initial, oh, my God, this is so good. I watched it again. I'm like, oh, no, oh, my God, this is really good. And I'm going to say this right now. The, it's, very, it's very easy to go, well, let's compare it to the other Akira Hokuto match on the, on the list. Mm-hmm. And so I did that, and I'm like, this one's better. Oh, wow. Fight me. Like, I don't care if you think I'm wrong. I think this is a superior match to the one from 93 with Kandori. So, Paul, I did the same thing, right? I watched this match, and then I watched another Toyota match because I just wa- I had to see more. Oh, yeah, you have to. And then I went back and watched the Kandori and Akira Hokuto match that was already on our list. And I, I actually a- had the opposite reaction. I, I thought match. that one was a, a much better match from start to finish put together. Well, like, when we first did that match, I'm like, this is really good. But I don't really see why everyone's calling it the greatest match of all time. When I watched this one, I was like, holy shit. Like, they do stuff in here that people don't even fucking do today because it's hard. So, like, watching them do, like, innovative shit in 95. Like, we're watching this from 95. Like, this could have gone on today. And we'd be like, oh, my God, best match of the night. Yeah, well, the other match, they do a lot of this stuff, and it's 93. I know. Well, No, they weren't doing fucking 
springboard planches in 93. They, they were, though. They didn't do this. <laughs> this match was very different. Uh, this match involved, uh, you know, tables, and I feel like that actually sort of took it away from what uh, Hokuto and Kandori were doing because that one felt a lot more real, like a lot more uh, well, that's, physical. Well, that's because Shinobu Kandori was a legitimate, like, like fucking judo champion. Like, mm-hmm. she was a, like, legitimate combat sports athlete. Right. But but let's not forget, they also went to the tables in, in that match as well. Let's let's not forget and the tombstone. And they didn't fucking break there either. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, oh, tombstone so on the, the table. Dent in the that, table. Yeah, that's, that's where the, the bleeding started. Exactly. Yeah, because yeah, exactly. the table didn't break and she cut her fucking forehead open. <laughs> Something about those tables in Japan, man. Yeah, I don't think they're intended to break. <laughs> yeah, they're not. <laughs> what so I, when you when you see like the splashes of the power bombs on tables in this match, they know these tables ain't gonna break. I'm right. trying to kill her. So Paul, because I'm that, the greatest. All of that said, where are you putting it? Oh, number ten. Number ten. So right above Akira Hokuto's last outing. I'm sorry. Scratch that. Number eleven. Number I would, 11. I would bump this above the Shinobu Kandori Hokuto match. Oh, okay. So that is, it is number 11. It's number 11. I'm right. sorry. Um, very interesting. Landon. Yeah. yeah. So. Oh, do you know what I originally wanted to say? <laughs> <laughs> number uh, one. One. Yeah, actually. When I first watched, like, oh my God, this is the best I've ever seen in my entire life. And then I'm, I'm glad like, you liked it. I'm glad you liked <laughs> it. And there's one of those, oh, wait a minute. Let's, let's rein that in a little bit. Let's watch it again and go, okay, now that I'm not taking notes and I'm noticing little things that I missed because I was writing notes down. I'm like, okay, this is amazing. It's not flawless. No right. match is flawless. So there's a couple of things. Like, you look at our top ten right now. It is literally a who's who of fucking flawless, ex- flawlessly executed matches. And this is not flawless. It, it, there's a few chinks in the armor. But I think a lot of that, it's not like, a, oh, they fucked up there. It's more like a... That was a little sloppy, but you did just get double power bombed on a fucking table. <laughs> so I'm gonna give you a break. Yeah. Um, so I didn't have this quite at that caliber. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong, but for me, this <laughs> falls somewhere in the 25 to 30 range, okay. just based on the spectacle, because that's really what I got. Right. It, oh, that's we're, a lot of spectacle. When we're talking match. 25 to 30, we're talking like a Cactus Jack Triple H. We're talking like around like an Edge McFoley. Like it, this match is about that spectacle. And I just to place it to actually place it somewhere between twenty five and thirty, I would have to split hairs. Actually, you know, another the first match I thought of was not actually Kandori Hokuto. You know, the very first match I thought of was Shibata and Ishii mm-hmm. because they beat the shit out of each other. Not quite that intensely, but like twenty years earlier, and they're like throwing in these stiff ass kicks and these. See, that up. one reminds me much more of the Kandori Hokuto match. That one does. Okay. So this is That's really weird because, like, I thought that match. You thought the other. <laughs> this is really interesting because I, the way I tend to start things, is which, uh, you know, which set of ten is this going to belong in? Right. Sure. Like, let's let's go there. And I thought definitely top forty. Mm-hmm. Oh. And, yeah. and then I keep going up the list, and I say definitely top thirty, uh, but I could not put myself over twenty. I like, agree. So I couldn't. I couldn't break the the twenty. Well, the twenty mark. Well, I was gonna say like you realize I just kind of I kind of put it in the similar range. Of land. I was like, yeah, the twenty five to thirty range. Absolutely. I was like, oh yeah. Well, it really, because when I was watching this match, there's only really one part, and I said this out loud. I was in the room by myself. I said this, eat your heart out, Ishi Shibata. I forgot what they did that made me say that. I think it was like that arm trap, like germ, almost like germ, almost, basically that arm, tra- I, I think I did call it a tiger suplex. It may not have actually been a tiger. It was like when you talk, when she trapped both her the arms. The arm trap, yeah. It's like, I don't I call, even, I, I've yeah. never seen a suplex. I call that a tiger incredible. suplex. It's not quite yeah. a double underhook tiger. It's not quite a tiger uh, suplex. So when she did yeah. that, is when I, that's when I was like, well, why don't you just kill her? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, yeah, that's whenever I was, I was talking about those. I even wrote it in my notes. I just didn't want to say it because I'm like, eh, Yeah, so that moment notice. alone, you know, makes it belong in the top 20. Um, but it's it's difficult to go beyond that based on just what yeah. we have there. So basically what I'm trying to say is I'm reining myself in. Uh, <laughs> I agree that this is probably going to be in somewhere in that range. Okay. So well, we were we, he didn't stand uh, too strong over no. 11. Well, well Landon, I have one question for you. <laughs> oh, dear God. This is the only question I have. Okay. I'm ready. Does this match hold the weight? <laughs> It does, it, so it holds some weight, <laughs> but clearly not enough to break the fucking table. Okay, yeah. So I, think, <laughs> I was going to say, I think you're right. hey, those tables didn't break, and there were three table spots, not like two. You know, something yeah. we mentioned earlier is how the story feels almost incomplete because of the ending of the match, right? 
and I and I think that that does sort of knock it down between matches on this list that are complete and mm-hmm. do you know top things off in a very neat you know put a little bow on it. Right. So, if I had to split hairs, what Landon was saying, uh, like what basically what picky because I know I know exactly where you're going with this. Yeah. Like, it, leaves, it leaves them to be desired. Right. It's a fantastic match, but there's a lot of fantastic match that leave nothing to be desired. Right. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I think the biggest point in that 25 to 30 range is number 25, like Kurt and Undertaker. I don't think this goes above that. So my kind of the lowest point right now is going to be that 26 is my lowest point. I feel like Kofi Mania is a more complete, important story. I agree. So I would dumb it. Not dumb. I would bump it under that. So my next highest point is twenty seven. So so I had twenty seven. Really? And, and for the point that you made about Kofi Mania is that that it's a story that, that is, feels complete. That is yeah. a that is a complete story. I think if I had to put it somewhere, I I agree. It would go right under the complete story of yeah. Kofi Mania. I was going to say, and the next one down is twenty seven, which is the DIY revival. That and I would put amazing. this over DIY revival. Yeah, I, I think, think I would too. too. So, so DIY revival is where it is because of the listeners, and that's where they. They voted it to go, uh, and so we, we made the adjustment to put it there. Um, it's right by the Edge and McFoley at 28, and I would be comfortable if I had to putting this above that as well. So I, I'm very comfortable with, with 27. 27. I am too, and um, my, the point I was going to make about the DIY Revival match, I felt like we built that one up higher than it was because we saw them have, hands down, the greatest match of all time at a house show. Yeah, and don't be wrong. There are a lot of shades of that match here. They have this basically the same finish, um, but I think the two out of three falls brings that match so far down. I think if it's just one fall to a finish and they tell the exact same story, but in one fall, top we would have had closer to what we got at the house. Yeah, I think I think, I think so. that would have been a top ten contender because it would have been this so much drama. Yeah, the two out um, of three falls I think lends itself to some predictability. Yeah, but well, I said that I said that as soon as yeah. they win Matt t- fall one, you know Revival's going to win fall two. You, that's mm-hmm. how these work. That's why I do love when every now and then you'll get a, you'll get a clean sweep. Yeah, those are fun. Those I are think good. my favorite example of the clean sweep was SummerSlam 2014. It's Cesaro versus Dolph Ziggler. Mm. Dolph wins fall one. Well, Cesaro's going to fall two when I was in, and then like literally, and five minutes later, Dolph pins him again. You're like, oh, clean sweep. Oh, that's right. They can do that. It's refreshing. They just never do it because you're not expecting it. I I honestly think if that match is one fall to a finish, exact same story, just one fall to finish, top 10 best match of all time. I really do think that. Uh, But it leaves a little bit to be desired. This, as does this one. It does, but not quite as much because we weren't, we weren't spoiled by the greatest match we've ever seen in our entire lives <laughs> like two months earlier. Well, I think what's really, really great and, and my takeaway from this match is two of the greatest wrestlers of all time, two of the greatest characters of all time. I mean, just watch those entrances over and over again. They're really, oh, really yeah. good. And, and you just have two athletes at the top of their game trying to prove who's the best. And, and, and sometimes like, wrestling doesn't get better than that. I, no, it really doesn't. And I, I really feel like there's a point where we, you were saying how Toyota is like one of these, oh, man, if you know anything about Joshi wrestling, you know she's the greatest of all time. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah, but we've been watching Hokuto. And I've seen Hokuto matches before this one where I'm like, oh, no, Hokuto's the fucking queen. You're not beating her. And so for her to beat her in what's considered the twilight, like the twilight of Hokuto's career, the swan song, like because she has what? Like five matches after this? You know, I'm just going to put this out there because I am desperate to go back and do an all Japan women's pro wrestling crawl. Is there a library? If someone knows somewhere where I can go back and watch every all Japan women's pro wrestling show, I think we'd all sign up. Tweet me at me. You can watch a good bit of their stuff on life. You can watch a lot of it on YouTube, and I think you can watch some stuff on Daily Motion at lower quality. Oh, no, I'm a completionist. I've got oh, to see I, everything. I, yeah. mm-hmm. I want to see more of this, and I know we've made this call to action before, but I'm going to make it again. Every time our lovely listeners throw us one of the match like this, some of these kind of, oh, man, if you like women's wrestling, you need to watch this match. We have loved it, and we have rated it highly. So I want to find stuff like this. I know we said it before. 
Send us your Shimmer stuff. Send us your stuff from Evolve. Send us your stuff from Stardom. Send us more stuff from AJW. We want to cover matches like this. And almost more importantly, coming up uh, is, uh, is it, was it Lucha Libre month? Yeah. yeah. And so we definitely want to be able to cover some great Lucha matches that we feel like is not yet represented on this list. Yes. So please send us your favorite Lucha matches of all time. Oh, CMLL, yeah. AAA, what are the promotions? Uh, that all have some of the greatest wrestling matches of all time. Send it our way. Send, well, send everything. We want. We want all the wrestling. Well, and what I what I think is super super awesome about this list, and so what's super important to us as we create it, is that it's one that is complete, right? Yes. And and it and 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 we love, um, you know, Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, Bad Blood as much as anything else. Oh yeah. But uh, we love that this list also helps us expand our horizons oh, it and really hopefully does. helps our listeners get sort of introduced to some some stuff that they might not have ever seen well, before. Well, I, I think one of the biggest takeaways from, from the show in general, and I'm going to quote when we had the shout out on the Going In Raw podcast, because whenever they heard the premise of our show, they said the exact same thing that I said when Lynn first told me. Oh, so like WWE? No, no, no. Wrestling. Oh, all of wrestling. This match might have a lot of WWE matches on it because that company has been around for 42 years and is has the easiest exposure. But I find as we're getting deeper into this list, I'm finding, guys, I can only think of maybe like seven or eight more matches from the WWE that we're definitely going to do, and we still have 51 matches to go. That's a great point. Well, and I think that brings us to another really great point, and that's episode 50. Oh, yes. yeah, this is episode 49. This is episode 49, oh, which I'm means so excited. our next episode is episode 50, and we're going to take one of those WWE matches that we have left to hit. Landon, what are we, do- what are we doing? Icon versus Icon. WrestleMania 18. The Rock versus Hollywood Hulk Hogan. And it's probably going to be the only time we ever see him on this list. <laughs> I, you, you know what? You can guarantee it. Yeah. <laughs> right we're not, not going to see Hogan again. Uh, it's probably only Matt Hogan. Matt Hogan do. versus Inoki is a damn good match from New Japan in the late 80s. We may see that. Okay, we might okay, see that. We'll fair. see. That's this fair. is the only WWF Hulk Hogan we're going to see. No, um, possibly. I mean, there there's an argument for Hogan Andre WrestleMania three. So we'll just we'll throw we'll we'll continue to throw matches on polls and and make sure that the listeners' suggestions are heard. And if the listeners want to see Hogan and Ultimate Warrior, if the listen if the listeners want I, to see, you know what, I would consider that one too. Right. It's so it, it'll be totally up to you guys. But I think it's funny, like, the Hogan matches are, like, the best ones are the spectacle matches, <laughs> not, like, the... The ones that are about more than the match itself. Yeah, like, well, Ultimate Challenge is, a, is the spectacle of, oh, my God, the first time ever, two baby faces at the main event. What's going to happen? Who's going to turn? Nobody turns. They just have a fucking wrestling match. Mm-hmm. Or this one, Icon versus Icon, where there's a lot of really interesting behind-the-scenes. There really is. Yeah. That's going to be this, a really fun discussion. I, I, I don't, I don't I want to talk about it right now, but this match we're going to cover has one of the biggest... Audibles in the history of the WWF, like the no brother, let's do this. Yeah, I'm excited. And that's I'll, a, that's I'll say a this right now. Point. It was the right decision. You're you, you totally agree, totally agree. Because I, I don't I don't think we talk about it if if that doesn't happen. I don't think so either. Yep. No. Uh, but Toyota Hokuto ranks 27 out of 49 matches so far on our list. Feel good about it. Next week, match number 50. I, I can't. Unbelievable. So this is the halfway point. That's right. Of our 100 greatest wrestling matches of all time. I never imagined we would get here. No, like, I it's just halfway to determining the last match standing. Unbelievable. You know, you know, Landon, if you'd asked me a year and a half ago if I thought I'd be here, honestly, I would have told you, Landon, I, I thought I'd be dead. But here <laughs> we are. Here we are. <laughs> Until episode 50, I'm Spencer. I'm Lord Paul. I'm Landon. And this is Last Match. I did mention them a lord, right?